Kia ora everyone. Thank you for taking the time this afternoon to join our webinar on the new recertification program and supervision. Uh, I'm Preeti, the communications advisor at the board. We have Dr. Mary Silcock, professional advisor, who will talk to us about what the new program is and what it expects of new graduates, uh, overseas qualified and returning practitioners. Um, I'd also like to inform you that we plan to replace our aging my OTBNZ system from mid-October. Mary has attached a few screen grabs in her presentation to take you through that. Um, just a reminder that you need to keep your employment history and contact details uh, accurate and up to date. If you have any questions, please type in the Q&A box and we will address it after Mary's presentation. On to you, Mary. Um, kia ora priti, um, tina koto katoa, ke ke keri keri roti mahi, ki ti paori faka ora nana ho o Aotearoa. Ko toku faranui iti rohi nati hoa, ke ti kori ro aho ki ti recertification program naf kai faka ora nana ho. Kia kaka kia kaha te reo Māori, rua manu mano rua te kau. Um, so I'm speaking to you from Kirikiriroa um, in Hamilton, where I work for, for the Occupational Therapy Board in the Rohi of Ngāti Hawa. And I'll be speaking to you about the recertification program um, that applies to us um, kai whakaora nanaho occupational therapists in the Te Reo Māori week 2020. So I will, um, so really nice to be here presenting um, with Preeti and I'll just share my screen. And so I can um, talk through the um, presentation that I've prepared. So what I'm going to go over is a quick recap of the recertification program in case you um, have missed that webinar we did last um, month about what it is um, and, and um, why we are moving into this. And then I'll, I'll cover over the requirements for registrants and applicants and um, then for supervision and how to complete the process. And then I've got a few tips um, to make sure you get through it and um, for successfully completing it. So if we go on to the recap, so the recertification program um, has been introduced to replace our current system where we have the standard scope, uh, standard conditions on scopes of practice for new graduates, overseas qualified practitioners and returning to practice practitioners. So at the moment we have a standard condition when people register in those categories and they have to meet that condition um, and then apply for it to be removed. So recertification program is uh, replacing that and it will come into force at the end of this month on 30th of September. So Andrew Tarnock, our registrar and CE, presented on the rationale that the board had for moving into this program last month and also the legal aspects um, related to the Health Practitioner Competence Assurance Act that um, it, it um, aligns with. So if you want to go over why we're doing this and those the legality um, aspects of it, um, go and watch his webinar, which is on our YouTube channel as well. So as I said, it comes into force on the 30th of September. So any new applications after that time will, um, if you're a new, re new graduate, um, overseas qualified or um, re being restored back to our register if you haven't practiced for a long time um, or you're returning to practice and it's been more than three years since you practiced. If you register after September, you will now have a requirement to be, you'll be on the recertification program, induction and orientation with requirements to meet that program. Um, so like the standard conditions, this requirement um, and of being on the program, the recertification program will be on the public register. So when you type in your registration number or your name or the public does, they will see that you will have a, uh, you're registered, you've got a practicing certificate and you are on the recertification program. So if you're an occupational therapist um, that has still got a new grad overseas 
or return to practice condition on their scope of practice right now, um, and it won't be removed by the 30th, you will just continue on this old, the current process we've got, our old system. So we will have two parallel systems running until um, everybody who has got the standard conditions on their scope of practice removed. So hopefully that will only take six to 12 months and then we'll have the one system. So you don't transfer into the recertification program, you will continue as you have um, once you, when you start and got registered. Um, and if this is you, we do have a webinar about removing the conditions and scope of practice on our YouTube channel as well that we did last year. So you can go back and have a look at that if you need to. And Tony um, Lancaster, our manager of registrations, is really great at helping you through that. And she's been working really hard to get people um, to remove the conditions so that um, we don't have too many people with conditions and scope of practice as well. So get in touch with Tony. I'll have um, emails at the end of this um, presentation and she can help you with that if you um, need some guidance. So before I start about the process of the recertification program and the requirements, I just wanted to um, talk about the upgraded websites. The pretty just um, in the her introduction referred to this. So as well as starting this new program and uh, process, um, we're also doing a really big background upgrade of all our website and IT system. So this will mean all. Um, processes and uh, payments and anything to do with the board is all on one website now and um, all through the same um, sort of uh, portals. So I'm just going to show you um, screenshots I've got in the presentation are of the new website and that's what the recertification program processes will be using. So they're not, you can't go into there yet, but hopefully by mid-October you will, it will be all up and running. Um, and so what I'm showing you is uh, basically what it's going to look like. There may be some odd little things that are slightly different, um, but this will be the general um, look of the new website. So, and we will be moving online. So all our systems that have had forms that you scanned, um, filled and scanned and emailed, you will not be doing that anymore. You'll be um, using these online portals to complete um, requirements that we need. So I'll move on to the requirements um, now. So the main requirement of the recertification program induction orientation is um, continues to be mandatory supervision. So if you're a new graduate, that means weekly supervision for six, 12 months. So new graduates, this has changed because it used to be 12 months. But now um, if super, your supervisor feels like uh, um, you're ready and you've completed the other requirements, um, you can apply earlier than 12 months. And But this, this, that will need to be negotiated. And lots of new graduates will continue need need nine to 12 months and that's perfectly fine. You know, make the most of having that mandatory supervision if it's available to you. Um, and then overseas qualified returning practitioners and practitioners that have been restored back to the register, you need to have fortnightly supervision um, for six months. So that, that's roughly the same as what it's always been. So what's new though, we are wanting all registrants in these categories to complete Tirito, our bicultural competency online course. And the board funds this course and it's accessed um, you can uh, learn about it through our bicultural practice page um, and you get an, a unique login password from us to um, enroll and complete those modules. So we'll need to see that that's finished um, as part of the requirements. And also um, the e-portfolio of all applicants and new registrants needs to be um, underway and at the standard that we would expect at six or 12 months or when you are um, applying for your completion of the program. So once the, those requirements have been met, it's the registrant or the applicant's 
responsibility to submit an application saying I've finished um, and can you assess this and remove the requirement from my registration status. So I'll talk about that, but it is the applicant's responsibility to do that. Yeah. Okay. So um, talk a little bit more about the supervision arrangements now, because this is the biggest part of the requirement. And um, organising supervision, uh, that weekly or fortnightly supervision um, can be relatively easy if you are working and entering a workplace like, um, that's a big institution or a big organisation with other OTs and that are used to having new graduates or overseas therapists coming. Um, so they will be able to assign a supervisor and you'll have that one-to-one -one supervision on a weekly fortnightly basis relatively easy. However, if you're intending to work in the community sector or in a smaller organisation or where there's no other OTs practising, it can be more difficult to um, get that uh, regular supervision um, organised um, or um, arranged when you start practising. So if this is the case, you can arrange more than one OT to be your supervisor. So ideally, you have one-to-one -one supervision, weekly, fortnightly, um, as much as you can. But if you um, need to, you can have peer support with other new graduates. You can um, maybe have some clinical mentoring with another therapist um, or group supervision that's facilitated by an OT. But the main thing you've got to keep in mind with having more than one supervisor, at all, they all have to be a practicing OT who has no condition on their own scope of practice and aren't on the recertification program either. So the, an overseas qualified therapist who's really experienced, who's on the, has just come to New Zealand, cannot supervise a new graduate, say, because um, they'll both be on the recertification program. And just if there is more than one supervisor involved, um, it's best to organise at the beginning who will be responsible for the supervisor report at the end, because the supervisors have to write a report and um, ideally the lead person would do that. But it's good to probably um, just make sure that that's um, understood if there's more than one involved. So um, the supervision, um, that weekly fortnightly period of um, frequency needs to be recorded on a log for us. So this has been on paper and people scanned them, uploaded, emailed them, but this is not going to be the um, case now. So sessions can will be all recorded online in a supervision log through my OTBNZ and I'll show you in a minute. Um, so then you can, um, the risks of losing your supervision log are less and um, we can easily see where you're up to in meeting that weekly and fortnightly in six month and 12 month period time frames. And we just need um, um, documentation, if you've got more than one supervisor um, starting to um, do that weekly supervision, just you can make a note of which supervisor each se um, session in your log um, was facilitating that session. So supervisors are nominated through my OTBNZ as well. So you would um, find their name on our red, and I'll show you in a minute, I'll show you now actually. So here's our log. So this is what it's gonna look like. So each session you'll just be able to um, put the date in, start time, um, what type of supervision it was, face-to-face, -face, um, phone, um, Zoom. And then you can have a quick note in the topics. We don't want to know what, what was being discussed and what you're getting supervised, all the nitty gritties, just you know, a, a basic general topic. It was about your caseload, it was about um, time management, it was about a clinical assessment, um, just whatever, just a rough um, general topic. And then in that note section, you could put maybe which supervisor it was, if you've got more or anything else you want to add. So each session that will be, you can record it and that will go into the little log and behind the scenes in OTBNZ. So if we move on to the supervisor's role then and the requirements for supervisors. So you will be nominated by your supervisee through 
their My OTB NZ portal and it will appear in your My OTB NZ account. So you'll have a name, a list of names that you're supervising that appear there. And then you'll be able to access the documents and the report templates that you need to sign them off at the end. So it will be an all an online system as well, no more paper. Um, and, and you can do it all um, through the MyOTBNZ logins. So, the, you know, the idea of the recertification program is for induction and orientation to these new registrants, these new practitioners to the um, current practice context of Aotearoa New Zealand. Um, so that is the main role of this six, 12 month supervision period. Um, so I'd suggest, you know, um, especially for this new recertification program, uh, you can ask the supervisee to have a look at the letter they get sent by us when they first register, because um, that will lay out what the recertification program uh, means and what they have to do to comply with it and how to um, complete it. And that can give you a guiding framework of what your supervision over six and 12 months needs to cover. Um, so we, we are expecting that induction orientation to our systems Aotearoa. So, um, you know, make sure you cover the OT board's requirements, including, you know, the third party sign off and uh, practicing certificate renewals, because that will be a new process for people. Um, and also um, acting as a e-portfolio supervisor. So, we really need supervisors in this mandatory supervision period to coach and teach supervisees how to use the ePortfolio um, to record their professional development and to um, support their um, documenting their continuing competence. So ePortfolio supervision hasn't been well complied with by the profession. So our audit we did for the 2016-2018 ePortfolio cycle there was only about 65% of the e practicing e therapists in that um, 3,000 practicing therapists had e-portfolio supervisors. Um, and there was a lot, we find a lot of e-portfolio supervision is why people do not pass the audits that we do, the routine audits. So it's a role that needs um, to be, um, we're just really trying to encourage and support people to, to um, coach and um, support supervisees that are new registrants to the country about how to use the ePortfolio and get it up and running for themselves while they've got that time of supervision. And um, we really, these new registrants, um, they may need additional support and guidance about competency two and our obligations under Te Tiriti or Waitangi. So they will be doing Te Rito, the bicultural competency um, online modules so that could be a really good platform to um, to uh, discuss how to practice um, in a bicultural nation of um, Aotearoa and what te tiriti means in practice. Um, so in te Rito, there's a lot of resources that you can apply to workplaces so you might be able to use that as a way to apply um, things uh, that are meaningful for your workplace setting. So the, the, the people on the recertification, recertification program um, may need support with this because they may have come from overseas and they may not have worked for a long time um, and um, that is part of the supervision role. Uh, we also um, are expecting, you know, discussion of the code of ethics, our competencies for registration, Health and Practitioner Act, um, and the funding models uh, that you, your workplace, and, and in general, ACC, insurance, um, the DHB system, the um, enable, the equipment, you know, whatever um, affects your practice, but also in general. So that orientation to how our health system works. Um, and of course, we also need a report from a supervisor at the end to say that um, the the person is ready to practice without that weekly, fortnightly supervision in place and that they're competent and safe to practice. So I've just put another little note there. Um, our supervision guidelines, our e-portfolio handbook and our recertification 
and the, and there's a recertification program guide on our website. So these have all been updated. Um, with the new website upgrade, our ePortfolio is all embedded in it, and we have tweaked it a little bit. It's it's the same. It's the same, um, but. They will, um, it looks different, but it's got the same goals, activities, outcomes, critical reflection cycle, the reflective practice cycle. Um, so the handbook and um, the supervision of it is these guidelines have been updated to reflect the new uh, website upgrade and also just building on what we learned from our ePortfolio audits and our audit programs about what sort of guidance people might have um, needed a bit more of to get the ePortfolio um, complied with better and also used as a, um, a positive professional development tool. So I'll just um, go on now, I'm coming to the end. Um, completing the recertification program is, you know, you do your time, you've got your six months of log of um, fortnightly supervision or, you know, six to 12 months of weekly supervision if you're a new grad, you've done that, you've done Toledo, your e-portfolio has got self-assessments and goals and activities and it's, you know, you know what you're doing with that. So then you're ready to, um, um, tell us that you've completed the recertification program. So that will be through my OTBNZ through a form that looks like this. And it's basically just some tick boxes to say, yes, I've done it all. Because um, we can check all the rest of it because it will be already um, um, submitted through our system. So the applicant does this, the registrant does this through their um, my OTBNZ account and the supervisor will do the report through their account, okay? So they will do a have a report. Now, supervisor's reports for the completion of the recertification program is, is going to be different from it was for the conditions. So that we know, we're no longer expecting any um, text um, of making, um, uh, telling us how people are competent. It's more of a yes and no box, you know, looking at the saying, attesting that the supervision log is accurate, that you've discussed the competencies, code of ethics, um, you, that you've oriented them to the health system, uh, territories being done, and you've been discussing it in supervision, and that um, you feel that they're competent and safe to practice. So that will be there, so you'll be able to do that. And then, um, so the, so so supervisor reports done that done their part. The supervisor's done their report. The practitioner's done their bit. Um, and so, uh, what will happen? That will trigger us. Um, this is the flowchart of basically what will happen. So the applicant will submit the um, form saying they've completed the recertification program, we'll assess all the information then. So we will look at that registration letter, we'll look at the supervision logs, we'll look at Toledo, the supervisor report and the e-portfolio. So if they all meet the requirements that we're expecting, the person, the practitioner will be notified and the registration status will be changed to no longer needing that, having that recertification program requirement. So you'll just be generally registered. Um, with no, no requirements on your registration status. If the requirements are not, um, not there, not quite met, um, we will advise the practitioner with some guidance for reapplication, and then they can just do that and then resubmit it. So and before um, I finish up, you know, it's very important to keep your contact details up to date. Without a, a current email address that you look at, regularly, you may miss some of this um, um, communications that will affect these processes. Um, and, you know, in our auditing, we um, regularly get people who do not know they're being audited because they're on maternity leave or they've um, left the job and their email address in our system is a work one. And so, and COVID-19 was a really, um, put an example of this, Some, there was been people on maternity leave or change jobs, they didn't get any of our updates. We were providing some very essential information then. Um, so just make sure your email address in our system is a personal one or one that you are really sure you are gonna always check and see emails from us. 
So we will, in this new system, we will prompt you when it's about four weeks before your six months or 12 months um, date is coming up from when you registered. So we will um, send you an email saying, look, um, it's six or 12 months up, you, you could start thinking about um, completing, you know, putting your application in for completion of the program. Um, and if we don't hear from you, we will follow up in about six weeks after the due date as well to prompt people to go through this process. So we really want people to move through this program. Um, we've had people with the conditions on their scope of practice for two, three, five, ten years, which is not okay. Um, it's illegal to practice. Um, and outside any requirements or conditions that the board has set um, for you. So if you're on a recertification program, you've got to have that weekly supervision or fortnightly supervision until um, the program has, the requirement has been removed. So it's in your best interest to get it done and do the application. And we will be helping um, prompt you to do that this, um, with this process. So I think, oh no, I've got tips. Um, so I've got a few tips. Um, well, I've mentioned it a couple of times, you know, refer to that letter that practitioners get sent when, they when they're initially registered, because it will lay out all this or tell you how to um, enroll into Litor and how to, um, um, do, you know, the things, the logs and um, the other requirements that you need to finish that program. Um, maintain that supervision log each session if you can, especially new graduates because your logs will become quite big and um, it, people do get into trouble retrospectively trying to do their weekly logs and especially if you have um, not written it down somewhere else or your supervisor has left um, and you can't verify it with somebody. So just try and get in the habit of getting that supervision session recorded each time you do it. Um, and I've, I mentioned that already, but the mandated supervision needs to continue until you've completed the recertification program and you have heard from us that, yep, your um, application was great, you met all the requirements and we've taken the requirement off your registration status on the public register. So that weekly fortnightly has to continue until um, you hear from us, not when you press the button and submit it. Um, and also, you know, the other new thing is that recertification program can be completed after six months for Aotearoa New Zealand graduates um, if, if that is um, appropriate for them. But, you know, really make the most of the time if um, you are able to and it's um, useful, you know, and carry on more than six months if, if you need it. If um, you change supervisor, or employer during your six or 12 months, that's fine. You just continue your supervision log with your new supervisor and you'll have to nominate a new supervisor through my OTBNZ. And we'll see who was doing three month, the first three months and then who was doing the second three months. And um, we they probably, we think there'll be, I think there'll be the capacity for um, all supervisors that are nominated to do a report, like that little tick box report, so that if somebody wanted to, they could, but usually the one that is supervising at the end, um, it's currently supervising when you're completing it, they can do the supervisor report. So I think that's um, all that I wanted to cover. You know, um, we're very um, happy to help people with this. So like I said, Tony is, re is the manager of registrations and she's really good with this process um, and is really used to helping people with the removal. And, the re and uh, she's the manager of registrations, so she knows all about it. Um, and I can, if you've got um, questions about organising the supervision or, um, uh, you know, if you want to have some support of how to set that up or whatever, you know, you can ring me, um, email me for advice about that or if you're a supervisor um, and we're really, really happy to um, help. So I think we can probably um, um, hand over now to Pretty, and I can um, see if you've got any questions for me. 
Thanks, Mary. Uh, we do have a few questions, actually. So the first one is about if a new grad is underway, so six months into their first year, do they still need to do the Torito course to have scope of to have the scope of practice removed? No, because that's not a requirement for um, the standard conditions and scope of practice. So if you have got a condition on your scope of practice, um, you just follow that process. Tarito is not a requirement for that one. We've moved into that now, the new program. Okay. Um, hello, I have a condition on my scope of practice, overseas qualified applicant, but it doesn't explicitly state anywhere that I need to do the recertification program. So do I need to do it? I registered in May 2020. No, no, you will continue on you will continue having a condition on your scope of practice, an overseas condition on your scope of practice. And so um, you just carry on for the six months with your fortnightly supervision. And our old processes and old forms are still on the website and you'll use those. So you email them instead of using that fancy new website we've got. Um, so you can email them to inquiries, that email, that's just up there. Um, um, yeah, so if, if you have, um, if you're confused about this, you can just email us and ask, um, but you will use the old system, old process. Okay, um, what if I change my supervisor during the recertification period? Um, that, that's fine. Um, you can, you could put a little note in your notes and comments section on your log that you've changed supervisor. Um, there will be a functions in the website for supervisors to um, say they're not supervising anymore, and then you and you'll nominate and the new one. So we'll be able to see you've nominated one now, and then they've stopped, and then you've nominated another one. So you just need to nominate a second one, and the first one will withdraw their supervision, um, active supervision in our system. All right, uh, so the next one is, what will happen to my old e-portfolio when we move to the new system? Well, it's all gonna be transferred into it. So it will be, the old, the old cycles will be archived just like they are now, and then your, what you've entered in now will be transferred into our new templates because it's basically the same. It's just going to be much easier to use. Okay, and uh, I would maybe, uh, I would just say though, um, it may be worth downloading them as PDFs if you're really um, concerned about that. Mm. Also, uh, someone's asking, what if I have trouble finding a supervisor? Yeah, it is, it is hard um, and that sometimes if you're doing non-traditional or in a small town or um, um, in, a, in a small organisation, that it's really important to keep, if you're a New Zealand trained um, OT, uh, to try and keep your professional networks with other OTs alive um, for this reason. So you can access um, people you know, um, you've got a network that you can ask if they know anybody um, in your region or um, that may be suitable. We at the board have a supervisor's directory, so you can look on our website and we've got a list of people who professionally provide, OTs that provide supervision as a, you know, as a professional practice. Uh, and so does OTNZ, um, the professional association, they have a list of supervisors as well. So you can access them and um, there's OTs on those lists from all over the Motu. So you might be able to find someone in your region, but remember supervisors can supervise you remotely so they can do it by Zoom um, or phone call. So um, if you can't find someone in where you live, you, you could, use, you know, access those resources from around the whole country. Mm. Okay, uh, the last couple, uh, what happens if I take a break? From the recertification program? Um, the, you would, I mean, that's okay. Um, you would just, it would just remain on your registration status. 
and we would just want we will be um, sending you little emails saying what are you you know you're going to complete your program soon and you can tell us you can update that and um, um, say you're having um, a few months off going overseas having a baby whatever you're doing um, and when you get back you um, depends how long you're away probably you may you may and how far you got through completing it um, of, of how much more supervision you're going to need or if you need to do you'll have to get that e-portfolio back up and running so you may need three or four months again to get those requirements met um, when you return yeah and uh, something similar is what if I have trouble finding a job in the first six months yeah so you um, th that won't matter either. Um, we will, so when you register and get your practicing certificate, that's, that's the day we'll sort of know, think that you're practicing. But if you're not actually practicing for a few months, um, th that happens, it happens a lot. So we are used to that. And when we send you a little prompt saying your six months is coming up or your 12 months is coming up and it, you haven't ha finished your six months of supervision or 12 months of supervision, you just you just can let us know and say, look, I've got two or three more months to go. I only started working in June or um, whatever the day was. Okay. Um, if you have any more questions, please do email us on inquiries at otboard.org.nz. Um, so if you'd like to view the webinar again, it will be available on our YouTube channel as well as uh, on our website. Um, we will be uploading Mary's presentation um, on our website as well. Before we sign off, um, I just want to say that as you know, we are celebrating Maori Language Week. Um, the board would like to encourage you to sign up for Torito, our free online bicultural course for all practitioners. Um, um, it's actually funded by us, it's not ours. Um, email us on torito at otboard.org.nz. That's T E R I T O at otboard.org.nz to take the course and uh, to get your login details from us. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And we'll be holding our next webinar in October. Uh, we'll have all the details up on our social media and our website soon. Thanks for joining us. Have a good afternoon. Hey, Kuneda.